Well, this may look like an E28 with a ton of parts in front of it, and that's exactly what this is. Welcome to episode two of the M30 B35 E28 528E conversion, along with a manual swap, ITB conversion, standalone ECU, and basically the whole nine yards. So episode two isn't actually going to be any work. This is going to be an episode dedicated to me going over the entire build, all of the parts we're using, the components we'll need, what I'm using and why I'm using it, um, in case that anyone is curious before it's all kind of in, because I know a lot of people um, sometimes find these videos at random times, they might not follow the whole build series, so I want this to be a general video for anyone that finds it to see what I'm going to be doing with this E28. And if you're interested and you're new here, every episode after this in this series is going to be me making all this happen. So if you're interested, subscribe, check out the other videos, etc. Without further ado, you guys know the E28. I have it pushed out of the garage right now. I was taking pictures of all my new beautiful parts here. And uh, I'm going to go through and basically talk about everything I have, why I have it, and what we're going to do with it. So stay tuned. Well, to start, obviously, we need an E28. This one happens to be a 528E. If you have an M30 car, a lot of this stuff will be a little bit easier. But at the, for the most part, a B35 never came in an E28. So either way, there's going to be a, quite a few mods. And this video is going to talk about what you need for the manual swap, what you need to get the engine into the car, what you need to convert the engine to, you know, all this fancy stuff and all that. So there's going to be quite a lot of stuff in this video packed in. So to start, the M30 B35 that you will need. Now this is where things can get easier or more difficult for your swap. The M30 B35 was found in three different cars. E32 735i, E34 535i, and the 88 and 89 635 CSIs. Now, if you get your B35 out of the 635, you just made your life a whole lot easier. And I mean a whole lot easier. Um, because the nice thing about that is the accessories that all come on the, in that 635 will all fit right in the E28. So power steering pump, alternator. And I don't think they changed that much. Don't get me wrong. You could probably mix and match a lot of this stuff. But you will know for sure that the power steering pump will line up to those lines, I'm almost positive, because that's a 520E, so it's got the traditional brake booster instead of the hydro boost. Hydro boost could be totally different, don't take my word for it. But alternator will all line up. Um, the motor mount arms, this is a big one, and this can get a little confusing. B35s came from, I don't know, 88 to 93. If you get a 93, 92, 91 engine from a later 735 or 535, you may not have the right motor mount arm uh, embosses on the block. And what I mean by that is if you look at how this motor mount arm mounts, you see there's a bunch of other holes right here. Uh, this is an earlier model M30 B35. So it has the early model mounting holes and it has the later model mounting holes. Um, since this is out of an E24 and the subframes are the same, even though this is in the different mounting holes, I believe this motor mount arm will work. I will find that out when I drop this engine in, don't hold me to it. But you need one that has the earlier embosses too, because if it's out of a 535 or 735, it has to be a very early model so that these will fit. And I have the other engine mount arms right here, which looks like this, and this mounts in the earlier spots. So they look to be the same arm, so I think I'm fine with the ones that are already on it. But that is where coming out of a 635 makes your life easier because it doesn't matter. The arm should drop onto the subframe because it's the same subframe. So that is something to be wary of. You kind of want an earlier M30 B35 if you don't get one out of a 635. Aside from that, I've heard mixed things about the oil pan. Supposedly, 535, 735 oil pans don't fit, but other people say they do fit. I'm guessing they do, So, but I didn't want to worry about it. So that's one thing you know for sure fits. I believe that is all that matters. Um, the only things you really have to worry about. Otherwise, a B35 is a B35. You got to worry about the engine mount arms and the oil pan, and then the rest of it will be the engine electronics that we're going to want to get into. And one more thing that will have to be swapped over, and hopefully you have an M30 B32 or a B34 to get this from, the back of B35s do not use the, uh, the water neck hole. They close it off, but E28 connections will want this. This is what will go into like the heater valve and stuff, and I believe the stock 528E heater valve will work. If it doesn't, I have one from an E28 parts car, but this neck right here, which will take the place of this cover, and then you have the coolant hoses that route how they want to be routed. Otherwise, I think, you know, you want 
535 E28 specific coolant hoses. I think they will all kind of fit with this. Something I, I won't know until I get it in, so don't hold me to it. But as far as I know, those are all the important engine related things. And then obviously how nice you want to get your engine looking is a whole nother thing. So I have all these parts that have been vapor honed that I have will, that will be in one of the other videos. Brand new alternator, water pump, obviously gasket sets and stuff like that. That's not really stuff I'm going to talk about much because you just want to basically refresh the engine. So this head will be coming off in a little bit here and we're going to refresh it all. No more leaks, no nothing. So as far as you want to go with that is, uh, you know, up to you. Next up, and this is a very important one, engine electronics. What am I using for engine electronics? So this right here on the right is an M30 B32 harness out of an E28. And this is the M30 B35's harness. No M30 B35, even in the E24, came with a harness that will mate into the fuse box of the E28. E28s used these, um, I don't know the, the technical term for it. I want to say it's X12, but my, maybe not. But this is the connector that goes into an E28 fuse box, right? This is basically the equivalent of the C100 and whatever connectors that go into the body harness of the M30 cars. It's 535, 635, and 735 all use these connectors. There is no harness that came on a B35 that can mate. So what we have to do here is actually cut and splice, and this, this will obviously be covered in the later videos, but we have to cut off the C103, and we have to cut this, or, and get this on it. Uh, luckily there is actually a guide on the internet to show which wire has to go to which on this so that it works. Whoever made that is an angel because that's amazing. Um, as far as I know you can't use earlier M30 harnesses on those B35s because there is a few extra sensors and a few things that are different. That's one of those things we'll kind of find out later but you don't want the matching harness and another thing as to why the 635 CSI is a good choice for your donor is because this harness will mate into the E28 rather nicely because the E28 and E24 share pretty, pretty identical engine bays like the battery location and where the ECUs mount and stuff uh, as opposed to 735s and E34s where they kind of have a different engine base setup. So some things won't route properly like the powers for the harness on the, you know, the E34s will be in the fuse box whereas on these it goes to the battery which is over here. Um, so that is why a 635 and I say this, but it's going to be very hard to find one. It's a very rare car. So I'm really lucky I found all this and I paid a premium for it, no doubt. But that is an important part right there. You're going to basically want two harnesses. Or I guess you could get a harness adapter, but that's an extra 200 bucks. So I'm just going to make two, one. And then as far as engine management, we are going with a Mega Squirt plug and play. So this is MS3 um, or maybe MS2, I don't know. But uh, this is only necessary because... I'm running ITBs. If you're running a stock B35, you can use a stock B35 ECU and have no problems. But uh, this car is obviously going to be an ITB car and it's going to be way different. So I got an MS3 here or MS2 plug and play. That's my harness. So that's as far as we need to go with engine electronics. Up next is our manual swap stuff. Maybe your E20 is already manual, then you don't have to worry about all this. But I'm using a G260 slash 6 manual swap. Uh, actually using two manual swaps combined here. So I'm using a G260 slash 6 out of an E34 535. Same trans as the later 535 E28s, uh, but the manual swap itself is a actually G260 slash 5 manual swap, meaning it's an early model 533 E28 drive shaft and stuff. And the drive shaft will mate to the later style trans, but the shifter linkage won't. And you can see there is our shifter linkage, the later style stuff right there, which you'll need. The earlier styles use the plate shifter, which will not work with the later G260. So that's something you have to be wary of. And then clutch kit. What we have here is an RHD lightweight flywheel, which it was recommended to me by a lot of people. That's what they like to use on the M30s. Um, and then RHD's website will tell you which clutch kit you need for that. Uh, so you could either go with the E34 M5 big boy clutch, which is super expensive, or you can go with an early M30 uh, clutch and flywheel or in pressure plate setup which is meant for the original M30s with the single mass flywheels. Later B35s had dual masses so you need an early model M30 clutch kit right there which is a lot cheaper. For headers I'm running the Schmiedman shorty headers. I've heard the best things about these fitment wise and honestly just accessibility wise they're very hard to find headers for M30s. They used to make a lot of long tubes back in the day you can't really get them anymore. 
These are super cheap. They come from Denmark, I believe. Um, the only fitment issues I've heard of is they hit a tab on the transmission, which I will probably grind down before I put the transmission in. Um, otherwise, I've heard things about the firewall, but I think that may be more so E34 related. So they should fit, we'll obviously see. And then from there, maybe a vibrant resonator, vibrant muffler, two and, two and a half inch uh, all full custom exhaust. We're not going with any stock exhaust because nothing will mate to that, obviously. So we'll see how that pans out. And then the most important part or piece of this puzzle for the C28 so far is undoubtedly the RHD ITB kit. This is the heart of this build. It is the coolest part of this build. And it is the reason why this build is a lot more intensive than just putting in a B35. There's a lot of things about the B35, putting in the E28 that you have to worry about, but most of them are pretty simple. But this opens up a whole can of worms. So as I said, this is the RHD ITB kit, which is absolutely gorgeous. It comes with everything you need to put these in the car, all the hardware and stuff, which is still in the box. I just have main, the main parts out. You got your fuel rail, you got your actual butterflies, you know, adapters, trumpets, plates the adapters to get it on the engine. This should all put, be put together really nice and fit on the engine, fantastic. Um, definitely an expensive thing here for what the power is. Don't get me wrong, I'm aware that, you know, doing any sort of NA mods on an M30, you're not really making much power, but I wanted these for the cool factor, the fun factor to teach you guys, because there's not really much on this on the internet. And there's a lot of things about putting these on that engine that make you have to change things. Um, more importantly, or not more importantly, but first off, the injectors. You have to increase your injector size. So what I went with here is S52 Pink Tops, fully rebuilt, refinished by Frank Leo Grande, Leo Grande Racing. Super stoked with the service. These are fully rebuilt, flow tested, everything matched. They look amazing. So bigger injectors, definitely gonna want those for your uh, ITBs. And then, like I said earlier, the standalone ECU plays a big part in these. You need to run these with an, on a standalone stock ECU will not work. Um, and then in order for that to work with the standalone, there's, I think, just a few things that you need to worry about. You need an E36 or a E34 525M50 TPS sensor because they're variable. And then there's some wiring that has to be done to that. The stock auto connector actually has three of the connectors you need to pin into that sensor. So you can just use your stock wiring harness and adapt that, uh, the connector for it right there. And then I believe in some senses, if you're running a stock B35 manifold, you need an adapter piece, which I got from Falk Engineering, or Falk Manufacturing, which allows you to mount the M50 TPS on the M30's TPS spot. I don't think I need that for this ITBs. I think this comes already ready for a E36 TPS. Um, so that's cool. Secondly, in terms of wiring, you're going to need an IAT sensor because that's just how you're going to tune them. And what I'm using for that is a GM IAT sensor. Uh, if you basically just look up GM IAT, you'll find it. I got that from Condor Speed Shop. Oh, and to get that IAT wired in, what you need is um, the, actually the stock AFMs use have like IAT integrated and Megasquirt's site shows you which wires of that you're going to want to um, cut up and adapt to your IT sensor. So you basically just take two out and hook it up to the IT. Uh, my buddy Hunter is actually making me an adapter so that I can plug the uh, GM's IT sensor straight into the stock AFM wiring and it'll look pretty stock so I'm pretty stoked about that. Otherwise to run these what you're going to need is a E36 318i M44 throttle cable. I don't have that yet. I got to find it. I believe it's discontinued, which is not good. Um, but once I get that piece, then I think those are all the things you kind of need to run these on the car. That should take care of all the wiring, sensors, and you know throttle cable. I don't think you need anything else special for that. And then you, you know the M30, a lot of people will do um, different ignition coils and stuff. Not really necessary. So this is the biggest piece of the puzzle. I waited a long time for these to get here and I am so stoked. And really, I think uh, that's kind of about it. Like I said, maintenance wise, do anything you would re regularly do. Like I got the L-ring head gasket set here because we're doing the head gasket, bottom end kit, all the, all the um, gaskets and stuff you could need, cap, rotor, belts, you know, all that stuff, new spark plugs. None of that is really has to be any different. Um, nothing special like you don't have to build the engine or anything we're not making any, that much more power 
basically this build is all the traditional refreshes of doing a manual swap and an engine replacement, all that stuff. And then I, from there, I just want to go and talk about the, the mods and the supplementary things I did, like the ITBs, the clutch kit stuff, headers, exhaust, you know, all that good stuff. So I hope that this video was, you know, helpful to people that want to do something like this down the road. I know maybe it was a little quick or whatever, but I think I covered all the main things. Like I said, everything I talked about will be talked about and done in depth on camera, like all the wiring changes, the sensor installation, the, the ITB installation, all that stuff. This is literally simply a rundown as an intro to the build so that you can watch this and know what's in store for the build because I feel like that, you know, I feel like people will probably want to know that, right? So hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope uh, you guys stick around for the build because this is probably one of the most intensive builds I've done. Uh, it's getting very expensive um, and I'm going, I'm, doing, I'm going the extra mile with a lot of things like the vapor honing and stuff. Like I want this engine to look brand new. I want this car to run fantastic and uh, I'm really excited for this build. So I already have a few videos already in the works. Like we're already cracking on that M30, cracking on the manual swap. So this is the next episode, but there's a lot to come after this. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.